Hello, my name is Carly Roberts. I'm the Family Engagement Coordinator here at Compass Charter Schools. I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to this recording. I would also like to thank our talented guest presenter. We have Dr. Kristen Beasley with us. She's one of our amazing educational facilitators who's taken the time out of her busy schedule to help with this presentation. Today, we're gonna to share with you some ideas and resources to help your scholars be more confident writers. Before we begin, I'd like to take a quick second to remind you that here at Compass Charter Schools, we have five core values. Those are achievement, respect, teamwork, integrity, and communication. These serve as our guiding principles for our scholars, learning coaches, and our staff. Each month this year, we have been taking time to focus on one of our core values, starting with achievement and working our way through to communication, as we know the importance of our core values and we want them to remain in the forefront of our minds. <clears throat> I'm so glad to have you joining with us as we continue to dig deeper into the role of the learning coach and the ever popular topic of writing and helping your scholar to be a better writer. Dr. Beasley will be covering the understanding of development, the purpose of writing, um, asking the question why, and some alternatives and strategies. And now I'll hand it off to Dr. Beasley. Whoop. Hi, everybody. So help, my scholar doesn't want to write is the topic today. And so it's, this is, this is an interesting topic because a lot of what people like to do are things that they need to do, things that they enjoy doing. So finding ways to make writing an enjoyable and purposeful activity is really what's behind the root of getting scholars to write or anybody to write for that matter. So, but I wanted to start with development because that's where I always like to start is, you know, what are our expectations? Are they realistic for, um, for our scholars and our children? So let's think about how kids learn how to write. So from ages one to three, children make scribble marks. And that's actually, that's writing. They're trying to tell us something. They're trying to mimic what we do because they know that writing is an important thing in the world. Um, they get a little bit older as they start to push towards three and they start to make quote unquote letter symbols. They don't actually look like letters. They look a lot more like scratch marks, but um, in their mind, they're making a symbol that means something. And then they put together a string of letters, which again is more like a string of scratch marks than it is actual letters. But for them, this is the beginnings of writing. And so we want to encourage this. We want to encourage like, this is a way, this is how people communicate with each other and share information. When children get a little bit older, like three to seven, they start to write letters with, um, they do start to have letters. Um, and they will write words that have beginning sounds or they'll use, they'll write words, but they'll only use the consonants because those vowels are just mysterious. Nobody under really understands what the vowel is before you're seven. Um, <clears throat> so they'll, they do, they do start to write things like mom, dad. So they'll have M, they do have that vowel in there and then the the next consonant next sound um so this is the beginning stage of writing we don't want to make it um feel like it's a it's a punishment kind of a task we want it to have a we want it to be a meaningful task so always keeping writing as a meaningful purposeful event is really important to having people want to write as well as being successful at it from ages seven and up it kids start to do transitional phrases really they understand that writing is about communication it's about getting our thoughts across to somebody else and so 
allowing children to use invented spelling because we can't expect them to know how to spell all the words in the dictionary, all the words in our human language um, at this point in their lives, but we still want to give them the opportunity to say what they need to say. So at the beginning, we just allow them to say what they're going to say and use invented spelling. And then as they become more mature, then we actually have the expectation that they're going to learn how to write using standard spelling and grammar. So that's a little bit of an overview of what the development of writing looks like. So here Ben Franklin wrote, either write something worth reading or do something worth writing. So the purpose is do stuff. It's not the, the task of writing in and of itself is not the, the meat of the subject. It's do something that's worth writing about or write something that's worth reading about. So if you can, if you can share that passion for sharing information and sharing meaning with other people, that's part of getting people motivated, getting scholars and children motivated to write about what they do or to um, <clears throat> also to read about what other people do. So using great prompts for kids, kids having experiences is a great way to, to motivate them to write. Hey, you want to write about what you're doing. Tell me about it. Share that information with me in another way other than just talking about it. All right, so the purpose of writing at the very bare bones of it is communication. We want to get our information across. We want to tell something to somebody. We want to share it. That can happen uh, in many different ways and with the use of many different tools, not just a pencil and paper. It can be a pencil and paper, but it can also be a computer, it can be a cell phone, it can be a tablet, it can be writing in the sand at the beach or um, using finger paints. There are so many different ways to write in order to communicate with somebody. So keeping that in mind and not keeping our lens so narrow that it only includes pens and papers or pencil and paper, um, is really important to the purpose of writing and getting people to want to write. All right, so historically, if I were to say, hey, <clears throat> let's go back to, to only using horse and carriage to get around. People would say, oh my gosh, you're crazy. We can't just get around in horse and carriage. We have cars, we have buses, we have trains, we have airplanes. I'm not just going to spend my, the rest of my life using a horse and a carriage. And so I think of this sometimes when I hear people say, um, everybody should know how to use cursive handwriting. Well, you know, sure, it's a really, it, it looks beautiful. Um, but in terms of moving forward, in terms of progress, in terms of where we've gone in forward into the future, is handwriting or cursive writing or pencil to paper writing really the most efficient way to communicate in history today, in our lives today? So, I, I would argue that the answer is no. We, we don't have to agree on this. However, looking at the future and the ways that people get information, um, we are going through, we get, we get information on a daily basis. We're, we're splattered with information on TV, radio, newspaper, magazines, social media all kinds of ways. We need to communicate faster than we did 100 years ago. So when we think about that, we need to get out of our comfort zone of just thinking pencil and paper and consider other options of writing as very, very legitimate ways of communicating. So 
and think about what are the skills necessary for the future? Is somebody really gonna say, hey, I want you to sit down and write in cursive this book. That's not gonna happen. That is not gonna be a job in the future. In fact, we have fonts on our computer that already write in beautiful cursive, much better than any of us can do. So why learn to do something that a machine is always gonna do better than you anyway? So I just want people to ponder the importance and the purpose of why people write and teach scholars to want to write but maybe using a different um, different tools. All right, so let's start with why. Why is it hard for kids to sit down and write on a piece of paper? Because this is the this is the big complaint. I, I see it with kids all the time. They're just like, oh my gosh, I don't want to write. So are they starting with the right tool? If you're a very young child, three, four, five, six, just using a regular number two pencil is not the right tool. That tool is too small for their fine motor skills. So you want to allow kids, if they're going to be writing on a piece of paper, give them a fat pencil. That's much more appropriate for their hand size and allows them to develop the fine motor skills they need to then move into a smaller pen or number two pencil. I use this picture of this little girl because her feet are not on the floor, even though she's sitting at an actual school desk. And the truth is, I would challenge any of you to pick up a pen and a piece of paper and then sit at um, a chair or something where your feet are not solidly on the floor. It's actually quite difficult to write when you don't have the stability of your legs and your feet on the floor. It's kind of, we don't think about it, but in the grand scheme of things, it does play a factor. So if a child is sitting at a desk or a table that is not appropriately sized for them, it's gonna be more difficult for them to write and they're gonna tire more easily. That's true with other, even if they're using a laptop, a computer, or <clears throat> painting, whatever they are, think about, you know, having your feet on the floor is a piece. Can my scholar be successful at this? If they can't be successful, they're not going to want to do it. People don't go out and say, oh my gosh, I just want to go out in the world and do something and fail at it over and over again. So if every time a scholar sits down and writes something, they get marks all over it, or they do it wrong, or we point out how they spelled everything, um, wrong, they're not going to want to do it. So it's important to figure out, um, make sure that the scholar is successful at what they're doing. Reversals of letters is common until age seven. So we don't need to get all wound up that kids are, kids are having letter reversals. As long as they're progressing in their writing, up until age seven, it's not uncommon for them to have reversals. We don't even need to point it out um, because they will slowly but surely self-correct by seeing um, words written correctly, whether it's on a computer or on a piece of paper or on TV. <clears throat> Another thing that we often overlook is having children's vision checked. Um, we just make the assumption, okay, they're young, they can see, they, they see fine. But if kids are really struggling with writing or putting their face very, very close to the paper or very, very close to their hand when they're writing, we want to take, take that into consideration and maybe have their eyes checked. Um, and it might be fine, but it's just something that we take for granted. A lot of, a lot of kids are not diagnosed with um, vision disabilities or vision issues until they enter school because for them, they don't know that they're seeing differently than everybody else because it's quote unquote the norm for them to not see well. So um, so having kids vision checked is, a, is an important uh, thing to think about. And last but not least, I wanna say learning disabilities. Um, you know, kids have learning disabilities and writing then becomes 
a very difficult task for them and we need to look at alternatives in terms of letting kids use a computer, use assistive technology. Um, one of the things, I'll just use dyslexia as an example, um, the brain actually operates on a completely different channel when typing or keyboarding than it does when you're using a pencil to a piece of paper. So oftentimes kids who are diagnosed with a learning disability such as dyslexia will find that it's very difficult for them to construct letters with a pen and a piece of paper. However, when they have learned all their letters and they learn how to keyboard, that the world just kind of opens up to them and they're able to get their thoughts out. And that's a very freeing feeling and it moves us back to success. Am I able to communicate when I write? That feels good and then I want to do more of it. So if everything we're doing leads to failure or um, uncomfortableness when kids are writing, they're not going to want to write. So it's our job as learning coaches and parents to find ways to take writing and make it a task that leads to success and sharing of meaning. <clears throat> so in the past, we only wrote on chalkboards and even whiteboards for that matter in school. That was the, that was the norm. But today in the present, people write they text, they write on social media, they use cell phones to write. I mean, they use notes, um, you know, eye pencils on their computer to write, all sorts of ways to get um, information down or shared. So it's important to, to think about historically, currently, and then what's the future? What are, what are we talking about in terms of communicating in the future. Um, Technology is going to be very, very important. So when you think about where you're spending time and energy to learn new tasks and new skills, do we really want to spend that time and energy learning how to write perfect letters with a pencil and a piece of paper when we have technology that can do that for us? Or do we want to learn how to utilize our technology in ways to communicate and get more information or use our information? So always thinking about what we're doing now and then what we're going to be doing in the future. I say that we don't ever want to waste people's time learning how to do something that ultimately a machine is going to do better and more often. I think that I think that we need to spend our time teaching children about soft skills, how to get along, how to share, how to share meaning, how to um, take care of each other, how to communicate effectively. So in terms of writing, always moving for the success and shared meaning and embrace technology. Technology is not our enemy. Technology is our friend. So whatever tools are available that help us get to a place where we can communicate is where we want to go. So that is the purpose. The purpose of writing, I use this example of this woman because She's expressing herself. That's what writing is supposed to do. It's to help us say, hey, that's funny. Hey, that makes me sad. Hey, that makes me scared. That's exciting. So we want, we want to remember the purpose behind writing and share that with our, with our scholars and our children so they can then embrace and want to share their writing with others. To think about, <clears throat> remember, Ask yourself, why do people choose to write? The purpose of writing is to communicate and remember always technology plays a role in how we write. Thank you so
so much, Dr. Beasley. I appreciate all of your insight and input and learning coaches. If you have any questions um, about this presentation or if you have an idea of a topic that you would like to see presented, you can give me a call at either 805-807-8215 or you can email me at kroberts at compasscharters.org or at info at compasscharters.org and I would be more than happy to help you. And there will also be a link in the video description that you can click on to submit your topic suggestions that way. Um, I wanna thank you again for your time. If um, I'm, We're so thankful that you are a part of our Compass family. Um, we hope that you will look at our other videos that we have as resources to our learning coaches and our YouTube channel. We're adding more all the time. And thank you again for watching this presentation. Thank you, Dr. Beasley. And we hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.